Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Hello, Sister Gertrude. Hi. How are you? Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing on this chilly Monday? How are you doing on this chilly Monday? How is your family? How is your workplace? How are the children doing? The neighbors? Your friends? How do you feel? How do you feel today? Are you grateful for another day? Are you grateful for a new day? Are you happy? Are you sad? Good afternoon, Suzanne from Canada. What part of Canada are you from, Suzanne? Are you happy? Are you sad? Healthcare workers, healthcare providers, frontline workers, how do you feel today? How is your health? How is your health? How is your spirit? Are you uplifted? Are you down? Are you sad? Are you energized? Are you excited? Not so excited? Is it a great day? Is it a bad day? Are you having a bad shift? Are you having a good shift? Frontline workers, frontline providers. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome one and all to this beautiful, sacred platform. Prayer for healthcare providers where we come together. We come together in one accord to proclaim, to proclaim the Word of God, to pray on behalf of our health care providers, to pray on behalf of their families, to pray for our nurses, to pray for our doctors, to pray for our police officers, paramedics, EMTs, the nurses' aides, lab technicians, respiratory therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, social workers, case managers, to pray for our administrators, to pray for our anesthesiologists. We are here together so we can pray on behalf of our health care providers as well as their families. Today, we are going to pray for special covering. And so we talked a little bit last week about faith over fear. How is your faith today? How is your faith today? Do you have little faith with a lot of fear? Do you have no faith with a tremendous amount of fear and despair? Do you have mustard seed faith? I'm still looking for a mustard seed. I'm going to find one before the end of the week. So the tip of this hairpin is the size of a mustard seed. Do you have mustard seed faith? Do you trust? Do you believe? Do you trust? Do you believe? Are you casting all your cares and all your anxieties upon him? You know who him is, right? Him, our God our Creator, our Father, our God, our Creator, our Father. That's who Him is. Jesus Christ. Are you casting all your cares, all your burdens upon Him? Are you anxious? Are you anxious? Because the Word said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer 
and supplications with thanksgiving. Gratitude, right? There goes the gratitude. With thanksgiving, your requests will be made known to God, our Heavenly Father. So as I welcome you today, as I welcome you today on this sacred platform where we come together to pray on behalf of our health care providers, let's get together and sing. Let's sing like you've never sung before. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Let's start proclaiming that faith. Let's proclaim that faith because we are here now. We are here right now, this second. So this is evidence, evidence that his mercy endures forever. Let's sing Great is Thy Faithfulness together. If you don't know it, you can find it either on Google or at any, any hymnal you have. Great is thy faithfulness. I want to hear you sing, 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 sing. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will sing with me, mommy, greatest, greatest thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, on to pardon for sin and peace that endureth. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to God. Strength for today, strength for today, and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine. With ten thousand besides, great is, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands had provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy Thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. If you are awake to see me, to hear me, to touch me, 
You are given a triple dose of mercy today. If you are awake to speak to a loved one, you are blessed with a brand new day of mercy. If you are awake to speak on the phone with your family members from a distance, you have been given a triple dose of blessing today. So, something to be thankful for, right? Gratitude, something to be grateful for. And yes, gratitude is part of faith. Gratitude is part of exhibiting our faith. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our prayer is taken from the book of Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Our prayer is taken from the book of Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Father, Father in heaven, I may not be setting out for the promised land. Lord, but I still have fears, doubts, anxieties, and discomforts. Sometimes I the promise that you will always be with me, even when I face dark situations. And I trust, Father, I trust that you will walk by my side as you did with, with them. Today, Father, today, I, we need courage we need courage to step forward. We need your help. Please uplift our hearts to trust you further. Thank you, Father. Thank you because you have never failed me. Thank you, Father. Thank you because I trust and know that when we believe and have faith clinging to your word, you promise you will never fail us. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Wasn't that an encouraging prayer? That was indeed very encouraging. And this was taken again from the book of Deuteronomy 31, verse is encouraging us to be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. For the Lord thy God will be with you, and he will not fail you, nor will he forsake you. Faith over fear. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you trust that the Lord, thy God, my God, will be with us, will be with us, healthcare workers and provider? Do you believe that he will be with us? He will not fail us. He will not forsake us. He will not turn his back away from us. As we remembered from two days ago, our great shepherd, he is our great shepherd, and the great shepherd will not let his sheep go. He will not let his sheep go. He promised that his rod and his staff will comfort us. Do you believe? Do you believe today? Because if you don't believe, then we're going to have to find a way to convince you. 
Let's sing another song. If you don't believe, we're going to find a way to convince you. Nearer, still, nearer. This is a new one for you. And you're going to catch this very easy. You've heard this song before. It's called Nearer, Still, Nearer. Close to thy heart. Draw me, my Savior, so precious thou art. Fold me and hold me close to thy breast. Shelter me safe in that haven of rest. Nearer, nearer, grant me your love and your peace. Isn't that a beautiful promise? What a beautiful song. Let's try it. Let's try it together. Nearer, still, nearer. Sorry. There you go. Nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. Draw me, my Savior, so precious thou art. Fold me.
Comforting, how comforting nearer, my Savior, still nearer to thee. Is there a burden that you are carrying right now? Is there a burden that you are carrying right now? Because if you do have a burden, nearer, my Savior, still nearer to thee. Draw me, my Savior, so precious thou art. Fold me and hold me close to thy breast. Shelter me in the safe haven of thy rest. Do you believe if you don't believe, we're going to pray to convince that you believe. We're going to pray to convince that you believe. Let us get into our devotional. And remember, as we've shared in the past, we use the Bible as our blueprint. We use the Bible as our blueprint. Do you remember from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17? All scripture is God breath, and it is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and I'm going to add more, comforting, strengthening, peace giving, healing, and training in righteousness. So that all, everyone, all the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that we can be equipped for every good works. Our devotional. Blade of Truth. The title is Blade of Truth. God's Word is alive, alive, and working, and is sharper than a double-edged sword. It cuts all the way into us, where the soul and the spirit are joined, to the center of our joints and bones, and it judges the thoughts and the feelings of our hearts. God's word is alive and working and is sharp. Do I need to say any more? Blade of truth. The Bible is not your ordinary book, like a surgeon's scalpel. It has the power to slice through lies to expose raw truth. It can prick a guilty conscience, heal a broken heart, or open eyes that have long been blind to God's existence. The verse in Hebrew is like the Bible's warning label. It lets us know that what you're holding in your hand should be handled carefully and that it will leave a reader or listener a changed person. Now, I did not know that sentence was coming. I have to tell you, I just opened the devotional book and there it was. Do you remember my statement? If you don't believe, I pray to convince you. How coincidental, right? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Here we go. 
The verse in Hebrew is like the Bible's warning label. It lets you know that what you're holding in your hand should be handled carefully and that it will leave a reader or a listener a change person. That's because the Bible is much more than merely points of paper. The Bible is alive with the power of God's Spirit. Like Jesus, its genesis is both fully human and fully divine. Through ordinary people wrote it, I'm sorry, though ordinary people wrote it, God worked through those writers in an extraordinary way. Throughout the Bible's 66 books of history, prophecy, and guidelines for living, written over a period of 600 years by more than 30 authors using three languages, there is a consistency of purpose about God and his plan for the mere coincidence could never achieve. The Bible is not a reference book to teach you about God. The Bible is an invitation to connect with God in a personal way and to learn more about yourself and the process. The more time we spend reading the Bible and meditating on how God wants you to apply what you've read, the more you'll learn to recognize the whisper of God's spirit in your life and to see his hand at work in the world around you. Finally, get to know God better by becoming better acquainted with the Bible. Psalms 119 reminds us, the word is a light into our feet. It's a light into our path. It gives us directions. It gives us motivation. It gives us purpose. And we just read from the book of Timothy's that the word, the scripture, God breath, which is the Bible, it's used for teaching, correcting and training so that we healthcare workers, all of us, can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, reading one Psalms in a chapter at a time from one of the Gospels every morning can be a great way to begin. The Bible, the Word, is an invitation to connect with God in a personal way. So here's another practical tool to build our faith, right? Another practical tool. So every morning, every morning I encourage you to pick up the Bible, read one chapter. If you have time, you could do two chapters. You could do three chapters, but read something Read something to further increase our wisdom and our knowledge, to further increase our understanding of God's way, so that we can have a personal connection with God. At the same time, we can learn more about ourselves in the process. For God's word is alive and working, and is sharper than a double-edged sword. It cuts all the way into us where the soul and the spirit are joined, to the center of our joints and bones, and it judges the thoughts and feelings of our hearts. Huh. Thought to ponder, would you say the word can also 
can also initiate a cleansing effect? Hmm. Thought to ponder. I hope this word is to you. I hope you are encouraged. You are encouraged by the promises because the promises are certain. The promises are true. The promises will come alive when we apply them. Will come alive when we apply them. Over fear. Let's read our Psalms before we get into prayer. Let's read our Psalms before we get into prayer. Do you have a need? Is there anything that you would like for us to pray for you for? Do you have a major concern? Do you have a major concern? Do you have a friend or a family in need of prayer? Do you have a friend in need of prayer? Do you have or do you know someone that is mourning a loss of a family member. Are you tired? Are you frustrated? Are you angry? Are you scared? Are you afraid? Again, we don't want to be afraid. Fear, not only when we read spiritually, fear can spiritually sink you, sink you into depression and despair. Physically, fear increases cortisol level. Fear can lead to furthering of infl chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation depletes your immune system increase your blood pressure, worsening your diabetes. We don't want fear. We don't want fear. We want to focus on positive behaviors, positive behaviors to deplete, decrease fear, increase faith. Positive behaviors like gratitude every day, listing, Listing what you're thankful for every single day. Do you know those 10,000 reasons you have? We just learned that if you read one chapter a day in the Bible, that can connect you closer to our Heavenly Father. Because the Word can come alive in your life. The Word can come alive. When I read the Psalms, it encourages me to take courage. When I read the book of Deuteronomy, it helps me to build my faith. When I read the Psalms, Psalms 23, it comes alive in my life, trusting though I walk through the valley of shadow of COVID, I will not fear any evil. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will not fear evil because he promised me that his rod is going to lead me and he's going to comfort me. So by reading the word, the word comes alive. And it's okay to cry because we read the other day that Jesus himself wept. Jesus wept. He cried. He cried when he heard his friend was dead dead. He cried for humanity. He cried for our sin. Jesus wept. And so that it's okay for us to cry. But as we're crying, we want to cry and praise at the same time. We want to cry and pray at the same time. Maybe cry and sing at the same time. You'll come to find that while you're crying and singing, you won't be crying anymore. You'll start singing some more. And so I encourage you, let the word come to life. Let the word become food for your body. 
not only for our spiritual body, but for our physical body as well. Because the word can pierce through the heart, the bone, the joints, and the marrow. The word gets in there. It fixes things. It puts things together. It puts the puzzle of confusion and fear away. The word makes things all good. If you haven't believed yet, we're still praying for the conviction. Psalms 143. Read with me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. The enemy pursues me, he crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness for those long dead. And so as a result, my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismay. I remember the days of long ago when I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. O oh, Father, answer me quickly, O oh Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I have put my trust in you. Show me the way. Show me the way I should go. For to you I lift up my soul. Rescue me. Rescue us, dear Lord, from our enemies. For we hide ourselves in you. Teach us to do your will. For you are our God. May your good spirit lead us on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, for your name's sake. I love that statement. Verse 11. For your name's sake. David knew. David knew when he wrote this prayer. David believed that God was the sovereign God. He was the mighty God. He was the great God. He was the beginning and the end God. That he was the God that was above all gods. David knew. And because he knew in faith, in faith, listen to what David said. David proclaimed the splendor of God. David proclaimed the splendor of God in his prayer. Proclaim his sovereignty. David said, for your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. Do you hear the power of this prayer? Do you hear the power in that prayer, in that statement? The power of faith coming from David. In your, for your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. Preserve my life for eternity, David said. Preserve my soul for eternity, David said. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, David said, preserve my life. This is my prayer today, guys. 
In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. And you could put there, silence my troubles. Silence my agony. Silence my despair. Silence my fear. Silence my troubles. Destroy all my foes. For I am your servant. The word of the Lord. How encouraging was that? And so I encourage you. When we part. To go meditate on that prayer. That prayer just pierced right through my bones, my joints and marrow. It pierced through my soul. It pierced through my soul. It comforted me. It gave me comfort. It gave me comfort, trusting and knowing that the sovereign God will take care of us, will take care of me. It gives me comfort and knowing while it pierces my soul, speaking life into my soul. speaking life into my soul that he would preserve me for eternity you know eternity is not here for us eternity is not here for me and you because jesus made a promise to us i am going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will also be. And that word just encouraged me that he will preserve me for that place, that eternity, that place that he is dwelling, that I will dwell there with him as well. But I must trust. I must believe. I must believe that if today this flesh is no more, that if today that this mortal flesh is no more, I must believe that Christ made provision for me, preserving me as David cried for eternity. That's the word coming to life. And so healthcare providers, trust, fear will kill us, spiritually and physically. Faith, faith, trust will give us peace and salvation will lead us to the ultimate place of eternity. So what are your needs? Pray for my family. Pray for my workplace. Pray for my son. Protection. Pray for my nursing facility. I am not feeling well, my stomach, and I'm frustrated and tired. <clears throat> we will pray. We will pray. Let's turn down the noise.
Let's shut it all off. Let's surrender all to Jesus. Let's give it all to our Father. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him and His precious daily live I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all Surrender. Cry if you have to. Release if you have to. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, you are an awesome God, bigger and larger than all that we can imagine or think. Your sovereignty and your greatness no one can fathom. You are indeed a God that loves all of us and that has made provision for us through your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you for the spirit of gratitude today. Thank you for love, for life. Thank you for comfort. Thank you for food and for shelter. Thank you for clothes on our back. Thank you for allowing us to be able to turn on the faucet. Thank you for allowing us to turn on the light switch. Forgive us for the things that we have done wrong. Forgive us for taking you for granted and taking others for granted. Forgive us for abusing one another. Forgive us for abusing the earth and all that you've created. Forgive us, dear Lord, for we've come short of your word. Our thoughts, our actions are not in accordance to how you would want us to be. Have mercy on us. Have mercy and create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Oh, dear Lord, at this hour, Father, at this hour, this minute, right now, our healthcare providers, and healthcare workers, frontline workers, essential workers, we need you, Lord, more than ever. Our government, our country, our economy, our international friends, we are in shambles. But, here's the but. You said in your word, if we trust, no matter the winds, you will take care of us. No matter the storms, the darkness, that you will be by our side. 
And so, dear Lord, I present the healthcare workers, providers, essential workers. Dear Lord, I present our nurses, our doctors, nurses' aides, respiratory therapists, physical therapists, case managers, occupational therapists. Lord, I present our anesthesiologists. I present every one of us in one way, shape, or form, has been in touch with your beautiful people. I pray that you will cover us, Lord. You will grant us peace. You will grant us health. You will grant us strength. You will grant us wisdom, patience, joy, resilience, compassion. You will walk through the hospital wards, the nursing homes, the jails, the homeless. Please send your angels. Send your army of angels to surround us, Lord. For those who are mourning, for those who have lost their loved ones, I pray, dear Lord, that you will wrap your arms around them and comfort them. You will grant them peace that only you can provide. Oh, Father, today, right now, we ask that you will please draw us nearer to your breasts. We ask that you will please wrap your arms around us. We ask that you will please whisper a word of comfort and conviction to us, Lord. And there is someone that may not believe or trust in you. I pray, dear Lord, that you will go nigh to them. Whisper. Open their eyes. Let your Holy Spirit give them evidence. Evidence of who you have been and who you are now and will forever be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for visiting our children. Thank you for visiting our family members. I pray for the person that has a stomach discomfort and she feels frustrated I pray for the nursing wards I pray for the OB wards and the babies I pray for our colleagues our colleagues dear Lord our colleagues I pray that you will cover them I pray for our workplace for our government for our factory workers I pray dear Lord for the labs and the manufacturers, the pharmaceutical companies. I pray, dear Lord, for our international friends. And Lord, there's so much we can pray for. There's so much we can ask. But I'm going to end this prayer right now by asking you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please infuse, inject our hearts, our souls, our bones, joints, and marrow. Let your word come alive in our souls, Father God. Please help us, Lord, to take time to learn to read the Bible, to learn more about you. Help us to draw closer to you. Help us to believe. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to believe in that truth, way, and life. And help us to cling into the promise.
trusting that you created a place for us to dwell in eternity. And so if you come for us, if this flesh is no more, if this flesh is no more, help our hearts to be ready to receive you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all of our health care providers. We thank you for their strength. Thank you for their courage. Thank you for their gift. Thank you for hearing our humble prayers, we pray. Bless our families. Bless the teachers, bless the child care providers, bless everyone that's joined this platform, whether they are health care providers or not, they are praying for us. I pray that you will give them a double dose of your Holy Spirit the same. Bless, dear Lord, bless. As you said in your word, our cup will run over and we will continue to bless others. Thank you for hearing our humble prayers, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll give you a few minutes to end your prayer. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread. Please, dear Lord, forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you for your strength, for your courage, for your smiles, for your smiles. Thank you for going that extra mile. Thank you for staying in the COVID room to hold the hands of the patients because you didn't want them to transition alone. Thank you. The hardest thing for me is um, the part where the patients have to die alone. That one's hard for me. And so, while you continue to take those extra steps and you continue to be agents of compassion, healthcare workers, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. 
May the Lord remember all your sacrifices. May the Lord give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May the Lord grant all your requests. May the Lord cover you, your children, your family. May the Lord place you in a supernatural bubble where no harm will come near you or your soul. Remember, we're fighting for the soul. The physical body, the physical body will deteriorate, but we're fighting for the soul. Some trust in chariots, others trust in statues. But I implore you, I encourage you today, I encourage you to trust in the name of the Father and His only begotten Son. Healthcare workers and providers, thank you. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in God's sight. Thank you so much for this time in prayer. While we keep the spiritual health, remember the physical health. Remember the nutrition aspect. If you're not on a blood thinner, indulge on your green leafy vegetables. You know, the cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, the kale, cauliflower, arugula, radish, indulge. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Have greens. Greens all the way. Do your best to avoid sugars. Simple fruit sugars are good. Limit to four servings per day. Grains, healthy grains, kamut, bulgur. Eh, stay away from the flour, refined flour. I know, everybody's bringing us donuts, cakes, spaghetti, pasta. Mm, not the best right now for the immune system. Don't forget your water. Don't forget to hydrate. I know. How am I going to hydrate, Hurley, in that suit? How am I going to hydrate? Do your best to hydrate, to protect your kidneys, to keep filtering the kidneys and the bowels. Do your best. And your vitamin C, I take 3,000 a day. If your vitamin D is depleted, go ahead and supplement that. Zinc, mm, zinc is pretty good too, but be careful with zinc. It has interactions with some medications. Talk to your doctor about zinc. In your sleep, if you have trouble sleeping, you hear that little music in the background? Turn on some soothing music. Get in the Word, read the Bible, sing a song. Think good thoughts, thoughts of thanksgiving. Sleep will become your friend. Lastly, 20 to 30 minutes. No sound? You can't hear me? Can you hear me? No sound? You can't hear me? Can you hear me? No? Okay. You could hear me now. Okay. Yes. Sleep. Rest. Soothing music. You could hear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sleep is important. 
And if you can't sleep, 20 to 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes per day, go for a walk. Today is a chilly day. I'm, I'm still going for my chilly walk. I will put a jacket on and go for a walk. Some days I go for a run. Other days I go for a long hike. Two hours, three hours. And boy, I tell you, the healing properties in the mountains, the woods, the forests, you know, you know, when you get into the woods, the oxygen, the birds, the waterfall, the streams, the mountains, the rocks are carved beautifully. You cannot help but to wonder of God's beauty. When you start hiking. So those are the physical things. I don't go out, I am in. So these are some of the things that I do to keep my physical health. What do you do? Share. Share some thoughts with us. Let us know what you do. Oh, I forgot. Tea. Ginger tea. Ginger, if you're not in a blood thinner, if you are not in a blood thinner, because ginger has blood thinning properties. Ginger tea. I put some turmeric in there. Cinnamon sticks. Anise star. Mmm, so good. Some days I add peppermint, other days I add lemongrass, but the ginger at night during the shift, when I have a minute, I indulge. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining this platform. We're going to go now. I want you to know that you are indeed very special. You are special. You are awesome. You are fabulous. You are a gem. You are important. You are valuable. You are valuable. You are a beautiful addition to the heavenly orchestra. Have faith. Faith over fear. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're in this together. Oh, I forgot to answer the question. Somebody said, somebody asked me who I was. I am not a preacher. I am not a preacher. I am not, um, I am not a chaplain. Chaplain Tillen that was here with us yesterday, she's a chaplain. I am a board certified nurse practitioner and I practice um, acute care and uh, I do all the in hospital kind of work you know from the emergency room to the ICU to the med surge floors we do all the admissions and uh, that's my role but I have a passion for holistic care and prayer prayer I believe and will hold us together through these hard times. Prayer, I believe, will hold us together through these hard times. So that's how I got involved into this prayer time for healthcare providers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. Until tomorrow afternoon, remember, you are in his hands. He's carrying you. He's protecting you. He is with you. Inbox us for your prayer requests. Email us. Call us. Comment. Let us know what you need. We will pray for you. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole right world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me 
In his hands he's got you and me. In his hands you and me. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the health care workers in his hands. The nurses and the doctors in his hands. The teachers and the child cares in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the PT and the OTs. The respiratory therapists. The social workers. He's got the whole world in his hands. The nurses aid in his hands. The lab technicians in his hands. Our families in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. God bless you all. Thank you. Where am I from? I live in Pennsylvania. I live in Pennsylvania. I uh, live in the woods, in nature of Pennsylvania. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Keep up the good work. Keep being and doing what you're doing, even when you are frustrated. Keep doing it. We are in this together. I will see you tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. Share the good news. Let somebody know. Come by and say a prayer. We will be delighted to share this time with you. Be blessed. God loves you. I love you. Bye now.